welcome to the Be Part of the Team podcast, the podcast that looks at all things referee development and good news stories from across our refereeing community. In this second episode, we're looking at teamwork makes the dream work, where Owen Taylor speaks to Kieran Henry from the Manchester and District Referee Society and Dave Charlton from the Northumberland Referee Society around their roles in assistant refereeing and working as a team of three. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Be Part of the Team with me Owen Taylor. On today's episode we've got two members of the National League match official team in Kieran Henry and Dave Charlton. Kieran is one of our assistant referees uh, involved in the the National League programme and Dave is predominantly one of our uh, referees who's also involved in in running touch and AR in on quite a regular basis for us. So as part of this episode we're going to talk about the team of three whether that's being the referee working with ARs or or just what it's like to be an assistant referee. Most of us aren't going to get that many opportunities to do it. So it's always interesting to hear somebody that either does it full-time like Kieran or, or does it kind of part-time like Dave. Introduce yourself, uh, let everybody know kind of who you are, mate, and, and what it is that you do week in, week out. Indeed, yeah. So I'm Kieran Henry, um, initially part of the Manchester and District Referee Society. Uh, and as Owen has said, I'm also part of the National League match official team as an, as a uh, effectively full-time assistant referee. Um, so I spend my Saturdays running up and down touchlines um, through the North and the Midlands uh, predominantly um, as acting as an assistant referee. Uh, hello, I'm Dave Charlton. I am referee on the National League match official team, uh, originally from Northumberland Society, but uh, on this year as referee, mainly running well, running's a loose term, plodding around on a Saturday in the middle of the pitch with a whistle, uh, and as OT has said, occasionally um, up and down the sideline with a flag in my hand for for Bucks or other National League games. Kieran, what was your kind of route into AR in? How how did that kind of come about? Because it's not it's not something that necessarily everybody thinks straight away. Or I, I want to go assistant referee, and it. it, it and not everybody, I suppose, has that opportunity. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about what that looked like for you? Yeah, so historically, um, when I was refereeing, I uh, got on to the Level 5 programme, what was our RFU North group back in the day. Um, and I refereed an RFU North group for, for, for three seasons up until the end of the COVID shortened season. Um, it then came about um, that I was released effectively from that scheme. Um, that, that was seen as my refereeing ceiling. Um, but I, um, I, I was quite lucky as part of the, of North Creep, I, I did have a number of opportunities um, when I wasn't refereeing to act as assistant referee in the in the national leagues, um, and that sort of sparked a little flame, should we say? Um, you know, and, and it's something that I actually enjoyed, quite enjoyed when I got the chance. Um, so once you know, I, I, I sort of realised that, that, that I'd sort of probably reached my refereeing ceiling. You know, I was I was keen to explore uh, the assistant referee route, um, so I spoke. With the powers that be, um, Michael Patz and Gareth Thomas, um, and and sort of suggested that I would like to try and go down that route. Um, so once rugby resumed, um, I was uh, I, I was quite lucky during uh, during the COVID period, as as you'd be aware, OT, that uh, uh, they got quite the opportunity in the women's AP15s um, to to run as oh, sorry to act as assistant referee, um, and that sort of allowed me to have a, a little bit of of time to really sort of explore if, if I enjoyed it and I did so once rugby returned full time uh, at, at the start of the 2021-22 season that's when I started as, a, as an AR and I've been going ever since so you know sort of a, a season and a half in as, as a full-time assistant referee. Awesome so because you've talked a little bit about kind of your, your refereeing ceiling so to speak where where do you find where you are now in your space that your your kind of ceiling sits do you, do you feel that like from your perspective as, a, as an assistant referee, that the kind of top of the game is quite ta- tangible to you. And in, in, in ultimately, it is a slightly different role, but it again, it's not necessarily a role for everybody, is it? It's not. No, no. You, you, you know, you, you're completely right there. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken to many people who you know, have given it a go uh, and have found that it's just not for them. You know, and, and, and that's perfectly understandable. It is a, it is a very different role. Um, in terms of my ceiling, you know, in, uh, or you know, my my aims as assistant referee, you know, I, I am ambitious. Um, you know, it, it, it is my ambition to to try and push and you know and, and get to the higher levels of the game, whether that you know by the PGMOT, whether that be the championship, 
you know, I'm 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 fully aware, you know, that 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 you know, the top of the game, the, the Premiership is, you know, that is obviously everyone's aim. But you know, as as a, you know, as people understand, it, it's it's very much a pyramid structure. So the higher you get, you know, your 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 chances of getting there get get reduced because you're fighting against more people to for a smaller shot. So you know, I'll, I will I will I will keep the ambition, um, and and we'll see where it can take me. Obviously, you've done a, a fair bit of AR in. Um, yeah. How how do you feel that running touch on a regular basis kind of helps aid your refereeing on a on a Wednesday and a Saturday, really? It gives me a better picture of what's going on. Because if you're just refereeing all the time, you're concentrating on just yourself. But if you're ARing, you're there as as as, as the as the term suggests, you're assisting uh the referee. Um, but also you're only part of the you're part of the team. And it gives you a different aspect of what's going on just from a sideline point of view looking at different things that you might not see as a referee from a different angle, but also learning from the referee in the middle about what they could, what they do. Could you do that differently? You're picking up certain things and from their refereeing style that you could adapt to your own going forward on, on a Wednesday or a Saturday and adapting and trying that out. I mean, from like a cell refereeing point of view, I suppose that's the learning part of it, even for, for us when we're, we're kind of uh, in those even in the top couple of tiers of of sort of national rugby, we're we're still always trying to learn, I suppose, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, what's the what's the the main differences between other than that it's assisting the referee? Is what what are the key differences in terms of skills, in terms of sort of day to day operations within the team? What what are the the main differences that you you see really? Like you like you just touched on there, it's a different, as Kieran's mentioned as well, it's a different skill set as an AR because you're not you're watching the game, but you're not watching the whole game. You've got little snippets to watch. Um you're and it's all about from a referee's point of view as well, Rayar's point of view, what the referee asks of you pre match and what they want, it'll differ from referee to referee. So Certain referees will give out a, a lovely brief during the week and then touch on it, you know, on a Saturday. Some will just do it on a Saturday when you're there. Some will just give you two words before you're about to go out on the pitch, um, naming no Depends names. Is well. that, just, <laughs> well, that just works for them, um, you know. So, um, but it's a different skill set. Um, and speaking to a couple of old boys who have are ARD um, for many a year, especially up in the Northeast, they still referee because it helps them keep an eye in of being still a match official because you still you never do you might get that referee does go down and AR one's gonna have to step on that pitch so if you still have the referee to keep your eye in but it's a completely different skill set but it helps as me ARing helps my refereeing as well I suppose from a, a really sort of high level is is what what is the job of the assistant referee what are they doing that kind of because obviously Again, 95 plus percent of people will be refereeing on a weekend without assistant referees. What is it that kind of is the main job of the ARs that that does make it a different experience for the referee as well? I think a good way of looking at it, and, and we'll all appreciate this being, uh, being educators as well, um, there's on on courses, they, we always say um, when thinking about refereeing that the ball is, is king. Um, I think as assistant referees, the ball is important, um, but a lot of your responsibilities roll around player actions. So players are key in 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 that aspect, um, and that's that's the biggest difference that I found when I first started, getting into that mindset that yes, know where the ball is, but the players are focus. And it's and it's switching between the two refereeing and they are in that is that is that big difference really, um, and you know that that's something that I initially took a bit of time just just to really get used to, but now it's you know it's, as as we talk about you know, sort of muscle memory, second nature, um, that that I do do that, and you know that is the biggest difference really. And what's the I suppose it's slightly different pressures, isn't it? Because I remember the the first mm. time I first time I aired was. Filed versus sale in National One on the Christmas game, and 
I suppose for for people that know Fylde as a club on a Christmas game against their rivals in the northwest in front of the big old stand it was loud it was intense mm. there were big decisions to be made and I mean as a referee I, th- I think I I kind of am able to disassociate from a lot of that stuff but every time AAR it seems to be almost utter carnage going on behind me at times so it re- I suppose we come back to that skill set don't we of how do you feel that the difference between refereeing and AR in how how does that feel to you whilst you're operating? I think actually, um, having spoke to a lot of other assistant referees, I'm 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 in a quite a unique position. Um, that I just seem to have this ability to block out sort of a crowd noise, crowd you know chat towards you. Um, you know, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I speak to the assistant referees, even like you know, you know say half time of the game, and and one, you know, my, my other um, AR may well go, oh wow, you know, it's 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 loud over this side, you're getting a lot of advice, and then come second half, it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I experience it, I'm like, well, I don't really feel like it. Um, you're obviously yeah, doing something really good there, Kieran. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say you just Clearly, do everything yeah, right. Yeah, mate, that's I, it. You know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm lucky in that you know I'm sort of 13, 14 years as as a match official. So and you know I appreciate someone was on this call doing it longer than that. Um, but hey, you know, oh, that, oh, that, yeah, that, I just that experience, that, North Group, man. <laughs> <laughs> that experience, I suppose, helps you to have a bit of you know how to best put it, selective hearing. I suppose yeah, a bit I of think, resilience, isn't it, as well? And yeah. just being it's being able to I, I mean I, I always think it's it's easier, I think, refereeing in front of a bit of a crowd than it is sort of one man and his dog on pitch three where you can hear every word that's being said. It it's it, again, it's that resilience, isn't it? What's it like working as a team of three from a from a refereeing perspective? What what does that team feel like to you on a on a Wednesday or a Saturday, really? I'd say this year it's definitely different for me. I've worked as team as a three as a referee for a number of years, but it's mainly just been local. So it's all the local lads that I know, um, at various levels. So you you know for cup finals in Northumbria, will stick me in the middle and two guys and then as they are's, and it's that type of thing of early on for those games as a referee, you're more taking control of the whole thing. But now I've learnt or becoming and working with some very good and experienced ARs so far this season uh, on the games I've worked with, you, my point always is we're a team. They wouldn't be there where they are if they weren't good enough. And they'll support me if I support them. And it's about working and trying to establish relationships with them either pre or on the day, because you know for a fact you're going to use them again later on in the season. So it's about building good relationships with you, being a team. And at the end of the day, enjoyment is key. You know, we're one of their, we're not there to, to ruin everyone's afternoon as a team of three. We're there to actually enjoy ourselves. Contra proper belief from certain ARs to certain DRs towards me, I'm not there to ruin their day. <laughs> I'm there to try and have some fun as well. Um, but it's working, it's try it's it's also good about building relationships and from building relationships you build friendships. And that's what rugby's always been about. Yeah, you're exactly right, DC as well. And you know, and and you know, we've been lucky, you know, we we've, we've worked together all of us this season um and that's a big thing for me you know as as i talked about earlier you know i i i had reached my refereeing ceiling on on level five um and that's something that, you know that i grew to accept um but now I, actually as assistant referee i've i've got the chance week in week out to work on level three and and level four games you know which are you know by all intents purposes semi-professional rugby uh, you know when 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 you think of the players playing there um you know i mean, I mean just 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 this last saturday just gone you know i was i was assistant referee for, uh, for the sale of c roslyn park game probably the premier game in 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 the uk at level three on on saturday albeit it was a few games off because the weather <laughs> um and you know don't get me started on the lens that the sale went to to get the game on um <laughs> flamethrowers that's all i'll say um but in general, you know, working at that level, I'm working with, or you work with people on a consistent basis. So 
you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a cliche, but you're working with mates and it makes it so much easier because, you know, barring a few exceptions, you all get on, you know, and, I, and, and as part of that, there's a natural trust there. So when you work it as a team, if, you know, I or the other AR says something to a, to a referee, whether it be you, Owen, or you, Dave, you know, I'd like to think that the guy in the middle thinks, you know what, he's saying it for a reason and he's saying it because he's right. And, you know, that's where the trust comes into it. And, you know, more often than not, that is exactly the case. Um, but, you know, now personally, for me, working at this level, I love it. You know, and, and yeah, I, I do dip my toe in, um, in you know, in, in, in Manchester in the middle to keep my, you know, to keep the refereeing side of it slightly active just you know on, on on the off chance that someone pulls a hamstring or something and I'm all of a sudden thrust in, in into the middle at Mosley or wherever it may be um but yeah you know it's it, it's a good level of rugby when you know all in all when you analyze it because the players that play there consistently and when you factor in that a large number of the premiership clubs use it as dual reds you know to, to send their young up and coming players out to get to get game time the standard especially in National One, is very high at, at the higher echelons. And and to be fair, being I'm I'm being you know, I'm I'm being fair to National Two as well. Some there's some very good rugby played in National Two as well. I mean, you, you said it there though, about how if as an AR you're gonna say something, it's because you actually think it. And I think that that's where a lot of the the misconceptions about AR in comes in a little bit where I don't know, say you'll have a, a director of rugby, well, it won't be a director of rugby, it'll generally be a be a coach or somebody with the water bottles or sometimes if the physio wants to chime in every now and again where they're like, oh, have you not seen this or are you not going to call that in? Are you going to do this, that and the other? And it, it comes back to credibility, doesn't it? Like, I know, I, I can't remember where I was, but a, a coach was like, how how have you not called that in? And I'm kind of, I'm stood there thinking, well, I'm, 50 odd metres away because it was like on the opposite 15. I think I might have seen it, but the referee that I was doing it for was about two or three metres away. Yeah. And it's all well and good calling it live, but you would look at it on review. And unless you've got it absolutely on the nose, the referee's going to, well, I, I know that from, if I was a referee, mm. it's not a call I'd be wanting to take because you're like, well, unless you're going to be putting your house on it from that distance. And don't get me wrong, there'll be times when like, you'll make a call that is absolutely on the button, isn't it? But it's all about going, how can we make the best decision possible as a team of three? Yeah. And it's about who's got the best facts, isn't it? Absolutely, it mate. Yeah. You know, and sorry. Go, no, no, go, go for it, Michael. Thing. No, I, I was, I was, I was, I was going to throw an example in, mate, you know, about the credibility piece. You know, I would get at Mosley, whatever it was, six weeks ago. You know, that, that, that scrum just for half time. Um, sort of middle, literally middle, middle of the field, wasn't it? Um, in 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 the 22, scrum goes down. Probably was an offence, but you know I'm I'm 35, 40 meters away from it. You know, do you want that? Probably not, because you know it, you know it, it was probably one of them eight, 80, 20s, eight, you know 90, 10 calls. But as as you say, unless you've absolutely nailed it on on the nose. Then you're probably on 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 review going to go is that where they call they need to put him, mm. you know. So you know the, yeah. the the credible call there was reset, which which is what we went for. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to go looking for things. You like, as OT said, you want to be 100% sure. I think I had one a couple of weeks ago at Rotherham where both me and my AR went hmm like across the comms, and we had a chat at half time and went. And I went, I was 80% I was like 80% sure something went mm. wrong. Then he went, so was I. And I went, well, it's a good job I didn't go looking for it. Because I don't want, I don't want to bank my house on an eighty twenty. I'll bank my house on ninety nine and one, but an eighty twenty, there's that still doubt in there. So let's not go looking for it as a team as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I've said to players before, where if you want us to start guessing, we may as well just start flipping a coin at every breakdown yeah. and every scrum, aren't we? So, no, I suppose that's a really good piece of advice. Because I suppose my my kind of final question, and, and DC, you 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 talked about it a little bit, where. For the vast majority of people, they will run run touch or be an assistant referee for um, 
county cup finals or yeah. um or things things like that um and, and i know certainly where we are in south yorkshire we have a little midweek cup that is merit teams and and lower 15 sides but we put teams of three out for them so as a as a really sort of core piece of advice what what is it that you would say to somebody who is going out and and running touch on on that that kind of cup final for for the referee uh i would what i would say my main bit of advice would be breathe let it breathe you're not reffing it they are let it breathe and see what comes first and then you can put input and just keep it short and sweet we don't need you know war and peace on what it is just a knock on green will do but it's just let it breathe because there's times where i've done it before and i'm sure i'll probably continue doing it at times whereas an ar you're about to stick something in and then there's some the arm comes out from the referee and you're like ah i look like an idiot now because he spotted it so just let it breathe the, the biggest thing to to referees who occasionally act, act, act as ARs is you know don't, don't overthink it for a start you know yes yes there is nuances but don't overthink it you know go out there and act as an assistant referee you know look out for the offenses and if they're missed then by all means give it to your referee um but i think you know i've, I've, I've sort of referred to it before as well the the best ref sorry the best assistant referees are probably those that say little but when they do say it it's short succinct and meaningful so you're giving key core pieces of advice at the right times if you're constantly giving you know giving decisions that may well be exactly the same as what the referee's already seen it almost becomes a little bit white noisy to referees and having spoke to referees about that you know they don't want that they want ARs that when they know they get something in 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 their ear, that it's because it's absolutely material and it you know and it's and it's core facts really you know it's, it isn't a lot of waffle as as you know as as, as some people refer it to it as. No, and and that that's it, isn't it? It's it's all about because I think Dave said before about people sending briefs out and re referees. If if you're acting as an assistant referee, everybody's got kind of idiosyncrasies and little things that they do slightly different um i mean it, it's going to be 99 percent of the the same thing and oh yeah <laughs> god forbid kind of having to listen to the same the same ar brief week in week out but there might be one sentence that's slightly different and that makes all that that makes the difference to the referee isn't it of yeah. going if we're working as a team and we want to get the best results i need to work however best this referee operates and like i say it might be that one sentence that's different week in week out but no that i think that's a great piece of advice and and whether you're refereeing uh, a county cup final or if you're doing again the the sort of lower 15s cup final or whatever it looks like i think that's a good piece of advice from referees is going actually what do you want from these two assistants on the sideline because if you don't know yourself, you don't know what to expect, and then yeah. I suppose you can't really, you, you can't really influence anything. Then you, you get what you're given, don't you? A little bit. Yeah. So, now awesome. I, and I suppose just to finish off, really, is it's what's what's the best part about having a team of three? So you know, working as teams of three, for a start, you are exactly that. You're a team. It's not a lonely place. You've got discussion points you know with with peers you know i'm i'm, I'm people you know that, that that are knowledgeable um and you know it, it is exactly that you know it, it is very much a team camaraderie approach you know I, I i honestly can't think of of any other guys or girls on the on the national league match special team who i don't enjoy working with you know there's there's differences you know in, you know in, in terms of how we work but i enjoy the different challenges that different referees bring you know because, you know just just using examples you know how we, how you might brief us ot and how we and how we and how we officiate a game together might be different to our you know to how we do it this saturday with with claire you know it's it, it's it's it is different approaches but at the same time i enjoy both approaches you know and, and i'm sure i'll enjoy both games just as much hopefully if it's on if it's yeah. on don't think it will be a file but you know needs must 
those Christmas games that file, mate, I tell you, they are loud. Oh, so file you can block out as much yeah. as you want, but I guarantee it will be loud. File pressed, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Big, big Billy Beaumont watching, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Uh, and for me, the main, well, not one of the main things. One of the things I love about working with the team of three is, is the pre-match snacks. <laughs> gotta, gotta bring the snacks. You know, it's it's a wide variety of of snacks from page, every page AR. one of the AR brief is dietary yeah. requirements. Yeah, yeah. Favorite yeah what we got, you know, the certain ARs like I know don't like certain certain sweets or you like Jaffa cakes, so you got oh, yeah. you got to play the game a bit for there. Um, so but it's curious. Vegan match officials, you know. Exactly. There things. you go. Cheese. Yeah, you brought that up. <laughs> I didn't bring that up. Went the whole episode without bringing that up. <laughs> it's all about candy kittens, mate. It's all about the candy kittens. Yeah, exactly. Go on, Dave. Uh, but as, as Kieran said, it's it's a team, and we're it's enjoying, and that's the, my main thing. Is you have a laugh as well. Yes, you you will take it seriously, um, and come game time, all three of us normally are switched on. Uh, for the 80 minutes, but at times there are times the down times you can have a you can have a laugh because we're there to enjoy it. We're there to enjoy it as much as the players are, uh, and as a team and as mates uh, that can become that you know down the line. Um, there are wonderful times that I've had as an AR, be it at Durham City or falling over a, a player and being laughed at by my own referee. So you know. There are times that we love as ARs and times we like as referee, but at the end of the day, we're there to have some fun, um, but be professional when we need to be. I think the big thing for me is about trust, isn't it? Like, yeah, I know Kieran said about working with your mates, and and we are really blessed in that. Generally, we are working with such good people, sort of week in week out, um, and in some circumstances, like like the pair of you two, I. I get to work with people that I talk to all day, every day, away from rugby and away from refereeing. So it's about trust. And, and I kind of think that I think it kind of comes full circle, really, about we actually go out there to try and make good decisions. And if I can trust that whoever's got the flag on the sideline is helping me try and make a great decision, or if I've got the, the flag and I'm trying to feed into the ref to, to try and add value, it, it, it just comes back to that. Look, let's work as a team. Let's have some camaraderie, but let's get really good results. I think that's what I love about it, I think. And yeah, definitely. Awesome. So I just want to say thank you to the Perry, really. Um, to check out more of our Be Part of the Team episodes, uh, check out our Spotify or Apple podcast page. And we should have a new episode coming out very soon. So thanks very much, Dave. Thanks very much, Kieran. And we'll uh, we'll see you next time. If you want to learn more about refereeing, visit keepyourbootson.co.uk for tons of online resources to help you on and off the field and help you on your refereeing journey. Till next time, see you soon.